created. So khair and shar, good and bad. So shar, bad, evil, when it becomes stronger, takes more power, has more energy, then what does the individual do? What does the shar do? It, uh, this force of bad, it, it inclines the human being towards wrong actions. Then all the wasteful discussion, uh, all starts to emanate from that person because shar has increased and become stronger. We say, oh, I don't feel like praying salah. Oh, I don't feel like um, sir, to recite the Qur'an. I don't feel like um, sitting in the company of a good person. And the inclination is towards bad actions from morning until evening. Uh, show the person a TV program. He will sit there all night long wrestling. He'll watch, he'll go on other channels and other systems. And his heart won't fill. And his eyes will be closing out of tiredness, but he will be eagerly watching and fighting with his body and um, clashing and misusing his body, etc. He's got him man, and he knows that it's not right. The thought passes, what am I doing? But because he is weak and khayr is weak and shar is stronger, so it doesn't allow him to think properly. Uh, Today, the generation we're in, it's very spoiled. Naturally, it's very spoiled. So Allah Ta'ala, when we are present to Allah, and we'll say Allah, when Allah will ask us, that, why did you commit sin? So, we can't present the excuse that Allah Ta'ala, uh, we went in Makkah Mukarramah, we were sat in England, in Bolton, and there were not good actions around us, so we also did the same. Allah Ta'ala will give the answer. That did you try? Isn't it? But what's the sign of adab and sickness? What's the difference? Today I can give this sort of analysis if you like it, except if not then you can shun it. What's the difference between disease, sickness, and adab, punishment? Look at the difference, I'll explain. The difference is that sickness, when you get the injection, yes, that there are, there are illnesses that are more severe, cancer, this, that, etc., but adab, punishment, what's the sign of it? The adab, the sign of adab is that fear develops, fear. Allah, fear develops. And today there's so much fear, so much khawf, that even myself I'm thinking. Myself I'm thinking, what's happened in the, in the dunya? I speak my heart, if somebody's upset or happy, but it's my habit. That what's in my heart I share. I share. Subhanallah. So I am surprised, taken aback, that this is such a big adab. Punishment. This is adab. This is not a sickness. It's not a disease. A disease you can prevent or stop with injection. I swear by Allah, nobody can stop the azab of Allah. This is, we're not thinking this way. And what a ajeeb adhab Allah Ta'ala has given. Think that in this day and age, such adhab have come. We read the Quran and history, the different adhab. But this, this environment, according to this environment, Allah has given adhab. What is Allah Ta'ala giving? There's no determined buildings are there. Everything stood. Nothing's been fallen down. Subhanallah, adhab has come. That the punishment, the sign of punishment is that so much fear has spread. So much fear has spread. There's no limit. There's no limit. Everyone is affected. And the achievement here is that the man is afraid, but the mu'min, how is he, be, he become afraid? It's surprising and shocking. I think this is ajib, this weird, this point. So much afraid, so much afraid, he says, close the masjids. Oh, close the places of worship. And um, seal it off. Close Makkah. Stop the waf. Oh, this is the adab of Allah, oh servant of Allah, subhanallah. That where the cure comes from, we are stopping and closing the hospital where the cure comes from. And we see this illness or this punishment, this illness so-called, this illness, the disease, that we see the effect of it that people say, I don't know, that 
this sickness is spread through the hand or contact, the germs come into your hand, contact, so wash your hands, wash them so much that uh, you can't get the sanitization uh, lotion in the stores, it's disappeared. This is adab. Tell me. So what's the situation now? You wash the hands, otherwise you'll get, you'll catch it, you'll catch it. Immerse your hands, otherwise it will come, come, it will come. So now you tell me that this is the masjid. Yes? How many people are sitting here? However many people are sitting here, that there, can there be anyone more pure than the people sitting here? Tell me. Can there be anyone more pure? So the person, we cannot come in. You speak about hand. There are many things. We talk about washing the hands. I'm talking about apparently, externally, every man sitting here is pure. Yes? Every man in the masjid, the whole dunya, the disease can come, illness can come, but in the masjid they cannot come. Like, this is my yaqeen, this is my search. So it, the adhab is not there. So why is adhab come then? Why is Allah Ta'ala not given a chance now? The adhab, the reason is this, that shar and khair, this is what I was explaining to you, evil and good. When shar evil increases inside a person, then the sins develop. And they grow. And which sins? Akhlaqi sins, conduct sins. At that time, the Allah Ta'ala, His uh, wrath, it springs into action. It doesn't take a second that the dunya gets um, negative effects. Allah Ta'ala doesn't listen them when He sees that dhulam is being done, oppressed on my earth. Allah does not want to see dhulam. Allah Ta'ala does like injustice. When dhulam becomes common, injustice becomes common and general, Allah Ta'ala says, then, then my wrath will come punishment. I don't want the dunya, then Allah says. Allah Ta'ala dislikes dhulam and oppression so much. Remember this. Adab comes at that time. So this adab that has come down is for this reason, at this moment in time in the dunya, that what has increased due to shar that's gone to the peaks is injustice. The sin that's gone to the peaks is the shar, the evil. And what is that? As dhulam, oppression, injustice, dhulam. Dhulam? Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, non-Muslims, Muslims, everywhere in homes, everywhere there's dhulam, oppression. Everywhere. Such uh, stories of dhulam you'll see today that a person cannot imagine. He cannot imagine. His hair stand on him. Am I right or wrong? My brothers think right or wrong? We need to think. The extreme dhulam in the world today, if we see in Hindustan what's happened with the human beings, yes, everyone, different religions, with human beings. Because the biggest factor in their life is humanity. Islam promotes number one and teaches humanity, compassion. If a person is hungry or dying or is in poverty, I won't go and ask him, are you Hindu or Sikh? Are you a Muslim? What's your religion? No. We don't differentiate. Islam teaches, go and ask that person, what do you have? What's the need for you? I will feed, I'll give you food. I'll assist you. I'll give you clothes. I'll give you shelter. He will say that I'm not a Muslim. He will say that it doesn't matter. You're a human being. My religion teaches me this. And... And this is what we practice, I swear by Allah, if we practice this, if we practice this principle, an enemy or a person of this country, a person who maybe is not a Muslim, a person who used to swear against a Muslim, as soon as he leave the, the youngster and go to the masjid, he'd leave his arm, go to the masjid, swear at him from far. And he became ill. This is a true story I'm telling you, it's a true story. He became ill. That person who was a non, uh, who was a Christian, this country became ill, severely ill, was it? and and then he couldn't, he didn't see him, the person. So the youngster thought, well, that man, I can't see him. It's been some days. He went inside. He knocked on the door. He said, "What do you want?" He said, "I brought some food for you." He said, "For me, you brought food." He said, "Yes." He took. He gave him food. He assisted him. He he said, "I'll bring food for you tomorrow. I'll bring medicines for you." Third day, he said. That I'm very sorry that I want to apologize, I seek apologies, I apologize, please forgive me and I want to become Muslim. That nobody else came, no Christian came, no other person came to ask me and the person I used to swear at, and this is your religion? This doesn't come automatically, Allah Ta'ala has made a principle, a methodology. It doesn't come automatically, tazkiyah. There's no uh, book that you will read that Tazki has occurred and you should have this akhlaq, read this book and you've then bought and purchased akhlaq. No, you cannot get a doctor or a hakim that will give you this. This is not the principle. So how does one attain Tazkiyah? How do we develop akhlaq, akhlaq hamida? I remember an event of Hazrat Sahib. Let me explain that then you'll understand with ease. 
um, there was a river and in the river there was a boat and the boat was sailing and people were sitting in the boat and it, they were enjoying themselves smoothly it was um, sailing and there were the waves and the tides and with ease people sat in the boat and with that there was a big um, stick you could say a piece of wood and it was floating near the boat and people was jumping up and down up and down with the wind it was going this way tossing and turning and and the boat the, the piece of wood was big and long and it was alone and nobody sat in it and the, the people was the, 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 were thinking that what's happening here and it went close to the boat he said you are also wood and I'm also wood and he said you also a man and I'm also a man like we say isn't it but the difference in this is that you've become a wali and I'm still in the same place that's the difference. So the, bo- the wood said, that you also wood, I'm also wood, I'm bigger than you, and I'm t- tossing and turning, going up and down, and the wind is forcing me, but you've got people set inside, you've got weight, and you are with ease cutting through the water. The stick, the wood, the piece of wood said to the boat, what's the reason, how comes this has come? He said, yes, I can give you the answer for this. He said, what is it? He said, you are also wood, I am also wood. The boat said, but the difference is this, that a master has put his hand on me and controlled me. Say, subhanallah. So you haven't been affected by the hand of a master. So the master has touched me and he's sculpted me that I don't just know myself, but I've also, I've learned on top of cutting through the water how to absorb the weight of the people inside me as well. So my brothers... Tazkiyah and tafsiyah and akhlaqi razila. To get rid of akhlaqi razila, we need to find the master sculptor who can who can make us like that boat. Doesn't matter the choppy waters come, the calamities come, disobedience, the storm comes. But subhanallah, where akhirah is being spoken about, fikr of the akhirah, worry of the hereafter, and the hadith says is that if you sit in such a gathering, subhanallah, that majlis you enter and you see that person, you remember Allah. If you remember Allah and seeing that person, subhanallah, you sit in his majlis and your ilm, it increases. And you stand and you go, a jazbah, a passion arise with you, that Allah, I want to be corrected, Allah, correct me, subhanallah. That place where you get, subhanallah, as Aisha radiallahu anha was, uh, the Prophet said to her, that Aisha, when you get these three things, then it's stated, that's the place where the human being attains Allah's nearness, subhanallah. Don't leave that place.